This is the legendary route of Marco Polo, land of Buddhist caves and lost cities. The Silk Road province of Xinjiang, a tourist paradise of fertile oasis towns, traditional bazaars, and forbidding deserts. A land of brilliant light and color. And, unknown to the growing number of foreign tourists, home of China's massive nuclear test program. Over the past four decades, the Chinese have exploded more than 40 nuclear bombs at their desert test site, circled by the Silk Road towns. Some of the bombs were 300 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. The devastating effects on the local population have never been revealed. This summer, dispatches traveled to China's western frontier. We were there to uncover the truth about the unknown victims of the Chinese nuclear test program. Getting the evidence to tell the story would require a high-risk undercover operation. China is an oppressive one-party state. Freedom of movement is highly restricted. Foreign journalists are banned from the province of Xinjiang. So we would have to pretend to be tourists while we carried out our investigation. We knew we'd need someone with inside local knowledge. In Istanbul, we contacted a senior cancer doctor from Xinjiang. Dr. Anwar Tokti told us he'd seen an alarming increase of cancer patients and deformities in children. He agreed to return to China to help us meet the victims and obtain confidential medical documents. <laughs> I'll go with you and try to obtain this material, but you have to be aware that the police will be following us the whole time. It's very risky. They'll watch our every move. It's the first day of our journey. The towns we're going to visit are part of any tourist's itinerary. Many of them are only 200 miles from the Chinese nuclear test site. We knew that when we met victims, we would need a qualified doctor to examine them. Dr. Laura Watson has worked in a number of British hospitals, and she's also practiced abroad, investigating the health problems of children in Africa. I'd always wanted to travel the Silk Road as a tourist, so when I heard it was a nuclear test zone, I was astonished. There's very little information about it. Radioactivity is known to cause cancers and birth defects. I'm very keen to investigate the extent of any health effects on the local people. In a town close to the nuclear test zone, we met up with Anwar. For the next six weeks, as far as the Chinese authorities are concerned, we're just another group of British travelers visiting the ancient sites and other attractions. So as not to arouse suspicion, Anwar pretends to be our tourist guide. Whenever possible, Anwar takes us off the tourist trail and down the back streets. Here in the traditional villages circling the nuclear test site, Anwar is determined to take us to meet people he believes are the victims of nuclear tests. For the villagers in this area, access to medicine is severely limited. When word goes out that Dr. Laura and Dr. Anwar are available to be seen, they're overwhelmed by the response. We can't tell the villagers we are researching the effects of the nuclear tests. This young man, now 18, has been unable to walk since the age of six. He has a chronic muscle-wasting disease. One day in November, he was playing with other children and it started to get very frosty. He fell down on the ice and broke his leg. 
It was broken from here. We took him to the doctor and they bandaged his leg up like this. Since then, he's been able to walk, but only with difficulty. He's got a very increased tone in his legs. And because he's never used them, his feet are turning in. It's comfortable like that. Okay. It sounds as though it was a problem that he was born with, that his legs weren't normal when he was born. And then, although he, he was able to walk, initially he developed degenerative problems from then on. It appears to be a form of congenital degenerative disorder, but without further tests, I can't say exactly what. Among the patients, we see a surprisingly large number of birth defects. This young woman has not developed mentally and has never been able to walk properly. Laura asks her mother about her early history. And she was learning to talk normally as well. She couldn't speak at all. She still hasn't learned properly. She was slow. But now she can say mum, dad, brother, sister. Can she stand up? She take her own weight on her feet. Stand up. Come on, darling, stand up. Stay still. Let your hands relax. You take a few steps. Very unsteady. I think physically she looks healthy, she looks happy, she looks well cared for. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we could do in the West that you're not doing here. That you're doing everything right. It's something she's born with and something that she's going to have to live with. <laughs> Within a short time, we see several different types of congenital disorder, but we need to investigate the possible causes. The next girl we see is 17. Her symptoms suggest a crippling bone disease. This one was born in the hospital. At the time, nothing seemed seriously wrong. Then she started to twist herself backwards. We thought she needed ointment, so we gave her some. We often took her to the doctors. He told us it was caused by calcium deficiency. And what's happened to the progression of her illness since then? Two years ago, she started to twist herself backwards again. Her bones started to crack. Her ankle had been broken since last winter. Somehow, when her nerves pull, the bone is pulled with it. Look at her. There's no flesh left on her legs. Firstly, I think it's very unlikely that her problems are due to calcium deficiency as such. It sounds much more likely that it's something she was born with and that it's a degenerative disorder. We spent the winter in tears because of her. We didn't know what was the cause of her terrible pain until we discovered that one of her ankle bones had come out at one side. We're aware that the authorities could catch up with us at any time. On our way to see another group of patients, we're warned that the Communist Party internal security is on our tail. We rapidly make our escape. In villages near the test zone, we've seen cases of children with terrible deformities. To find out if their suffering is caused by the radioactive contamination, we need to get hold of the Chinese authorities' own medical papers. Thank you.
Our search for evidence takes us to the region's capital city, Orochi. We know we can't stay here long, it's not a popular tourist attraction. Despite the risk, it's time for Anwar to begin his undercover search for medical documents. We give him a concealed camera to record onto video any documents he can obtain. To avoid creating any suspicion, Anwar tells the other medics he's researching a doctoral thesis on cancer. They must not suspect what he's up to. Under constant threat of being denounced as an imposter, Anwar starts to trawl through the documents. He knows that if he's found out, he'll face a 20-year prison sentence. While he continues his search for statistics in Urumqi, we receive important news from a contact. In the south of Xinjiang province, there are senior doctors willing to talk to us. To avoid attracting any attention, we play at being tourists. Then we hear from our contact. For the first time ever, doctors in Xinjiang are prepared to speak out about the effects of the nuclear tests on their region. They know they are taking a huge risk talking to foreigners. To protect them, their identities are heavily concealed. All I can say is that the chemotherapy department at the hospital is very, very busy. 90% of the patients have blood cancers or lymphatic cancers. Basically, cancer is everywhere in Xinjiang. The increase has been dramatic over the last 20 years or so, particularly in the south. We often see children here under the age of 12. They have lung cancer or liver cancer. We see both types in children of this age. The doctors confirm that cancers are rapidly increasing in Xinjiang. And what's even more disturbing, many of these cancers are among the young. This 26-year-old woman has bowel cancer, rare in a young person. But she lives in Kola, the nearest city downwind of the nuclear test site. The local hospital couldn't find what the problem was for a long time and the pain gradually got worse and worse. So, so this is a recurrence, this isn't the first time you've been in hospital? Yes, the first time I had an operation. I don't really know what happened, but after the operation I still felt ill. After radiation exposure, one of the cancers which appears most quickly is leukemia. If there are more people getting leukemia, it'll be a strong indication of the effects of the nuclear explosions. There are no statistics for leukemia here, but as far as we can see, more and more people are getting it. The number of people who have it now is much higher than before. This young boy is seriously ill with leukemia. His skin is covered in black marks as a result of the disease. Many families have children with blood cancers, but they can't go to the hospital. Blood cancers are difficult and expensive to treat, so many people just die. Some of the people are diagnosed, but then realize they can't afford the treatment, so they leave. The doctors we meet are convinced that radiation from the nuclear tests is responsible for the increasing rate of cancer among these young people. But they also say the Chinese state is blocking all access to the truth. The nuclear explosions have caused increased air and water pollution. We can't do research into it. It's not allowed. We can't do any of the research. Back in Urumqi, we meet up with Anmar again. 
he's managed to smuggle out a batch of documents from the hospital. Our excitement at getting hold of them is mixed with anxiety over the increased risk. Among Anwar's Hall, there are many scientific papers on radioactive contamination from the nuclear tests. But they all contain the same blanket denials. According to the Chinese, the nuclear bombs did not cause any radiation contamination in the Silk Road towns. And there were no ill effects for the local population. But evidence from the international scientific community shows this to be untrue. Fallout from Chinese nuclear tests was detected 5,000 miles away, even in Britain. We spend the night sifting through piles of documents. Suddenly we get a break. A scientific paper from the epidemiology department of Xinjiang Medical College it says that here in Urumqi, the largest city near the test zone, the number predicted to die from cancer is going to virtually double between 1993 and the year 2000. An extraordinary increase. We record the sensitive documents onto videotape so we can smuggle them out as tourist film. We are now determined to get hold of further documentary proof. Anwar decides to take a huge gamble. He asks his contacts directly to get him access to a specific, highly confidential document. He knows that any one of them might betray him to the police. To avoid any suspicion, we return to our role as tourists. Kashgar where the Silk Roads of China converge. In summer, it is the highlight of any tourist trip. They come to see the rich oasis culture of the Uyghur people. Chinese nuclear bombs have been detonated in their homeland. A local contact takes us to secret meetings with more patients. Radiation can cause children to be born with cleft palates. Here we meet one such child out of the many born into families living downwind of the test zone. After the bombs were exploded 10 years ago, in the towns near the test site, many children were born with cleft palates. We found that for every 10 patients, eight had cleft palates. For a doctor to see eight out of 10 child patients with cleft palates is unusual and a clear indication of the effects of the nuclear tests. The incidence of congenital deformities is very high we also have deformities, such as enlarged stomach, enlarged bowel, enlarged head, and gynecological problems. There are many children with deformities that we never find out about. They just die. Nobody has ever said it, but we think the nuclear pollution is the cause. This six-year-old boy is typical of the children we meet. His doctor's report states that his brain has not formed normally. So what things can he do now? Can he walk now? His small brain, leading to severe learning difficulties, indicates yet another congenital abnormality. Oh, he's a bit unstable. People from Kashgar, Hotan and the other areas around here when they find out how difficult treatment is and how much it costs, they have to take their children home because they just don't have the money. The parents tell the children that it's God's will if they live or die.
Since the mid-1980s, the Chinese government has encouraged thousands of tourists to visit the region. But in the same period, unknown to the Silk Road holidaymakers, the Chinese detonated 18 nuclear bombs beneath the ground. They claim that they are safe. But radiation from those tests is known to have escaped into the atmosphere. Fallout was detected in neighboring countries and even as far away as Japan. Five weeks into our trip, we hear from Anwar again. He's made another crucial breakthrough. We rush back to Urumqi. Anwar's high-risk strategy has paid off. He's managed to obtain a highly confidential document from inside the Chinese medical establishment. The paper is marked, restricted, take care of this document. It is a desperate plea for more cancer facilities and ends, we cannot wait a moment longer. Well, I mean, these figures are really good because <coughs> it compares the increase in cancer rates per 100,000 for the whole of China and then for the whole of Xinjiang. The document Anwar has got hold of records the rising incidence of cancer in China since 1965. The figures reveal how from the early 1970s, cancers in the Silk Road towns close to the test site began to rise much more quickly than in the rest of China. By 1990, cancer rates in these towns were more than 30% higher than the national average. Since 1976, the increased radiation dose from the bombs appears to have produced a dramatic increase in cancers. The number of cancers in the Silk Road towns increases even faster as more tests are carried out. These statistics amount to a chilling demonstration of the effects of the radiation on the people who live there. And this secret document confirms what the doctors have been telling us. The types of cancer which are rising the fastest are malignant lymphoma, then lung cancer and leukemia. Well, that's absolutely astonishing because, I mean, those are the cancers you'd expect to be associated with radioactivity, would be the lymphatic cancers and the leukemias. So that's just amazing. Over the years, China has built a wall of secrecy around its nuclear tests. Scientists denied any health effects. Doctors could not research the effects. But here in our possession was the evidence to nail the lie. A colleague arrives from Britain. He stays at our hotel. Like us, he appears to be just another tourist. Now he has to take the vital evidence out of the country. For the past six weeks, Anwar has run the daily risk of being informed on. It's time for him to get out. As he leaves, he knows he'll never be able to return to China again. But at Beijing airport, he was strip searched and interrogated for hours. But because he wasn't carrying any evidence, they eventually let him go. When we hear that Anwar and the courier with the tapes are safely out of the country, we destroy any incriminating evidence of our investigation. At the end of our so-called tourist trip, we and the other travelers can leave. The millions of people in Xinjiang do not have that choice. They've had to live through the largest series of nuclear tests carried out in a populated area anywhere in the world. They must grow their food on this contaminated land, drink the water that runs through it, and breathe the air which blows over it. And one of the worst things is that people there are, are so aware of what's going on. Um, everybody talks about it. Everybody knows about it. The doctors all seem to know about it. And they're not allowed to say anything, they're not allowed to protest. And not the doctors aren't allowed to do any research into the subject at all. It's all undercover, it's all secret. And that's one of the worst things. 
while the Chinese government continues to hide the appalling truth of its nuclear tests. Like this 17-year-old girl, countless thousands are suffering the cruel consequences. This winter, my daughter really suffered from the pain. Because she couldn't bear it, she kept saying, maybe we should cut my legs off. I really can't bear the pain anymore. I didn't know what to do. I tried to hold her, comfort her. One time, she even said goodbye to us. She said, bye, Mum. Bye, everyone. I can't bear the pain anymore.